now it's time for us to get into a very important conversation and um, we'll be looking at um, a young man uh, who's living with leukemia at the age of 14, um, Anisius Wallerman Eber. Um, he's here together with his mother, Alice Kizine, and we also have um, the chairperson of Childhood Cancer Parent Support Group of the uh, Greater Accra Regional Hospital, Emmanuel Fusu, also on the set with us. Lady and gentlemen, you're all welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now, let me just begin with um, Anisius. You are the subject of today's conversation. Yes. Um, how are you? Um, doing well by you're, God's grace. You're doing well today yes, by God's grace. Um, now, let me come to mommy. Um, I understand that. How, how old was he when you first found out 13, that he had cancer? 13 years. He was 13. Yes, yes. That was about a year or one and a half years. One and a half yeah, years. Yeah, 18 ago. months now. 18 months yes, now. Yes, Wow. And um, did you understand what it meant at the time when you found out how mm. serious it was? No. No. I didn't even believe it. Wow. Doctors was calling me, mm. talking to me, mm. to come down. Yeah, I have sisters okay. and sons that are nurses. Mm. And they were telling me that I should agree mm. to yeah. what they are telling me. Mm. I should listen to the doctor. Yeah. And finally, I get in. You did? Yes. Okay, okay. And it's been one and a half years. Yes. Um, Emmanuel, uh, how... What is it like in terms of the support group? Um, why was the group set up in the first place? I, I'm sure, I mean, the, the answer seems like maybe it's obvious, you know, but talk to us about, because you're the chairperson of the group. Sure. What was running through your mind? Why was the support group set up in the first place? Okay, so um, thank you very much. Just like she said, when the news is, you know, broken to you, the parent, mm. it is very difficult to accept it, mm. especially living with a child that has not been, you know, ill. You know, yeah. the way it, it happens, it just you see normal malaria, normal fevers, just like that. Wow. And you know, series of tests, mm. and then you get to that point where it is disclosed to you. So, it is very heartbreaking. And hmm. sometimes, when the medical doctor is telling you, yeah, you 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 see it different from when someone who has gone through the process mm, is patting yeah. your back and okay. telling you that okay. you know, calm down. Okay. Like she said, yeah. she has you know, nurses and people to yeah. convince her. Mm. Because um, the advantage to that is that um, it will then will pave way for the treatment to begin. Yeah. The earlier, the, the better. better. Yeah, yes. the earlier, the better. But they, because they've been parents who, when um, they are confronted with mm. that, they pull out completely. Mm. Mm. They don't. They, ne mm. they never come to the hospital again. Again, yeah. Well, um, we're going to talk more with Anisius shortly. But let's take a look at what Dr. Nihad Salifu, who I caught up with yesterday um, at the hospital, um, had to say about all that's going on. Let's take a look. Um, welcome back. Now we're going to just we'll come back to you and, and, and give you that um, quick conversation that I had with uh, the doctor in just a little bit. But let me come to you, Anisius. So, what is a normal day like for you? I mean, these days, in the last one and a half years, what does a normal day feel like? Um, it has been sometimes stressful mm. and. Sometimes you, it's a bit okay. When you say stressful, mm. describe it for us. Do you like, feel pain? Yes, pain. Where? Discomfort. Pain where? Uh, sometimes, like, uh, it's not actually pain, but I just feel like abnormal, mm. weak. Mm. You feel weak? Yes. Okay. All right. And um, But I understand you're an artist. Yes. Yeah. And do you find that 
um, maybe sometimes doing your art mm -hmm. takes your mind away from yes. what you're going through. Yes. You find it gives uh, me so much pleasure. Okay. It calms me down. It relax. It makes me relax okay. and gives me more hope. Mm. It makes me like happy to feel comfortable. Yeah. Wow, um, Emmanuel, observing um, Anisius as he's been going through his experiences, what what goes through your mind? You know, um, when a child is not well. Sometimes as a parent, you wish you could carry that pain mm. because sometimes you are helpless. Yeah. You don't know exactly what to do mm. for your ward. Mm. You know, you wish you could bear that kind of pain. Mm. Mm. Why should that little boy yeah, be go going through, through this? That? Yes. Yes. You feel you're an adult, yes. so you have the muscle to carry that pain. Mm. You feel sometimes hopeless, but you just, you just need to, you know, um, be there for him. Mm. You have to master courage. You have to be very inspirational, very encouraging, mm. and always get him what he needs. Yeah. And that kind of support, yeah. making him feel comfortable. Like yeah. he told you, it's very stressful. Mm. I have lived with a son who has finished his treatment and recovered fully. And, you know, you have no clue mm. what um, the boy is going through, what he's yeah. thinking. Yeah. And the kind of um, discomfort it gives. Now, I'm curious about something, because I know that um, Anisius went into remission, and then suddenly there's a resurgence of yes. the leukemia again. Do you sometimes worry about your own child? With my son, I have Yes, to with your son, yeah. Okay, so usually this, um, what Anisius is going through mm. now um, will happen during the course of the of the treatment. treatment. Okay. Yeah, my, my son's case was a little, a, little, a little different. Okay. So he's finished and he's finished and completely. You see when you when you are done with treatment mm. it doesn't end there. Okay. There are regular checkups. Wow. There are things that as a parent you need to mm. look out for. Mm. And anything at all that takes place you quickly need to call the doctor, the doctor. to discuss yeah. what is happening. Yeah. They are in um, first eight things you need to do and then you can quickly come to the mm. hospital to be attended to. Mm. But when you delay, when you lay back, that is where you create problems. Yeah. 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 Mommy, sometimes uh, what goes through your mind when you think about your son? He was perfectly normal, everything was okay, playing normal like a normal child and everything else. And then now this problem has come. What, what goes through your mind sometimes? In fact, it's not something good mm. I've been thinking about. Mm. The whole family is shut down for the past eight, 18 months. Mm. As we are sitting down here, it's just by the grace. Mm. We are going in and out. Yeah. It's people that is giving me 100 cities, 200 cities mm. to be taking care of the family, mm. especially the daughter we yeah. had. Yeah. We will come. They will provide for us to go and come. In fact, because you can't even work, you have to be, you have to look after him. No, no, no. Wow. When wow. it started, he was being in the hospital for three good months. Mm. Very down. He can't even get up and sit on the bed himself. Wow. He was wearing pampers that time. Hey. Yes. Wow. It was very serious as yeah. the way it is now yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's difficult. Very. Very. That's difficult. And in terms of the financial cost, how has that been? Yeah, I'm working in BIA Hospital. Okay. When it started, they came in. Mm. The payment, the treatment. So you yourself, were, you were working at VRA? I'm working at VRA. Okay. VRA Hospital. Yeah. Okay. They came in. Mm. They pay for the treatment. Okay. Three years. Mm. And we have been through going in and out, small, small. Until 17th January, mm. we did a test on the 18th. Yeah. We came to Rich Hospital, and then Dr. Nihad Salofu break another new mm. to me that the thing has come back again. Come back again, and this one, this time around, is very serious. Mm. Three wow. more than uh, three times of the first one. It's difficult. Very, very, very difficult. Yeah. 
So, from your experience, Emmanuel, um, dealing with your son and then also relating to other parents, how, how do people go through this? How do, how do people stay positive? How do people, you know, make it through the dark days? So you see, our settings um, are such that we are very religious people, you know, yeah. as Africans as mm. we are, we are mm. religious people. And when you don't have, you don't want to hear all these technical things, the only mm. thing you tend to is to pray yeah. and, you know, expect that the doctor will come back to you and say, mm. whatever test we did, Mm. you know, it's not, it's nullified. Mm. I mean, it's, mm. it's no more there. That is the yeah. only thing you can think of. That yeah. Because you, you can't, you can't, um, you, you can't open the next chapter of what's going to happen, yeah. especially for this particular case where you know what you have been through, you yeah. know, over the months. Yeah. And you've been told that it is three times more than what you've what been through. What it was through. before. And it's very, very expensive. Yeah. Talk of time, mm. talk of other resources, talk mm. of the family's mm. position, everything mm. will just come to a halt. Yeah. So it is wow. not something, um, that is why the support group is there, okay. so okay. we can inspire each, each other, other psychologically, yeah. emotionally, emotionally, and also especially. spiritually, because okay. the doctors are doing their part. Yes. In fact, Dr. Nihad okay. is an excellent doctor. Yeah. All the medical staff you know, at REACH, they've been doing excellent work, the mm. medical director, you know, yeah. But you know, that is what he can do yes. because they're the technical yes. team. But beyond, there is a the lot more. Aspect as well. Exactly, yeah. there's a lot more. There's a divine yeah. aspect, emotional, yeah. psychological trauma, yeah. and all of that. Yeah. So the support group is there to okay. speak with so, you. Okay. So, so I want to say, I want to say a big thank you to all of you for coming through because it's very bold, you know, to come out and and, and sit here um, on City TV. Uh, but we want to take a look at this video, the conversation I had with Dr. Nihad Salifu. Thank you once again for coming through. And uh, um, Anishos, we, re we wish you well, and our prayers are with you, and mommy as well. Thank yeah. you. Let's take a look at the conversation I had with Dr. Anis um, um, Nihad Salifu. Now, in the United States of America, the month of February is known as the um, Cancer Awareness Month. The However, internationally, the day in the month of February that is recognized as the International Day of the Childhood Cancer is the 15th of February. We want to have a conversation with Dr. Nihad Salifu, who's an oncologist, and uh, to find out some of what the challenges may be. And um, there's a young man that she's currently working with, um, you know, and find out some of the challenges that they are facing. Dr. Salifu, good morning. Good morning. Right, so um, an oncologist, for the lay person that's watching that doesn't have you know, a good understanding of what an, an oncologist is, what is it that you do? So basically, um, the term oncologist refers to somebody who treats cancer. We have two sets of people you can describe as oncologists in general. So we have those who take care of the cancers that occur in children, and those are a pediatric oncologists. Okay. okay. Or in a layman's term, you can say a childhood cancer specialist. Mm. Then we also have the medical oncologist mm. who tend to take care of uh, adults with cancer. So I am a pediatric oncologist or a childhood cancer specialist. Mm. All right. Now, um, we, your your your. Work came to our attention when uh, we found out about this young man, you know, who is suffering from what we refer to as ALL, um, um, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. What is that exactly? So, uh, normally we have white blood cells in our body. Now, the, the blood that runs through our veins is made up of different components. What makes the blood red? They are the red blood cells. In addition, we have the white blood cells. Now, the red blood cells, they help us transport oxygen when we breathe it in to the rest of the body. The white blood cells basically are in charge of helping us fight infections and also provide some surveillance in the body to make sure that the body does not go down 
with certain other diseases apart from infections. Then we also have a group of um, particles we call platelets. They are also in the blood and they help us in a way that we don't bleed spontaneously without anything causing the bleeding. So what this young man is suffering from is the commonest type of leukemia that occurs in children. So there are certain factors we'll consider to measure the risk and then we will begin the treatment. So in his case, the risk was high and so he was treated as a high risk you know, person. Along the line, I mean, usually when we start the treatment, within a matter of four to six weeks, we are able to say that the patient is in remission or is not in remission. This type of cancer we treat for three years. So at the first month of, uh, by the end of the first month, when we did the bone marrow aspiration again, he was in remission. And he continued to be in remission. He finished the nine months of intensive phase of treatment. He went back to school. Everything was going well. He actually is a very good artist. Okay. So he does excellent hard work, uh, artwork. During the intensive phase, we don't allow them to go to school. We don't allow them to appear in crowded areas simply because their risk of getting infections are very high. And so imagine taking a young boy out of school in his early adolescent years. He's not in school. Tell us, how did you feel in the moments when you discovered that a relapse is happening? Because they live in Akosumbu, I would usually ask them to do their blood counts, his blood counts at the VRA hospital, and send to me so that I would have a look and see whether his counts are okay to take treatment the following day. So on a Sunday, they did and sent me the results. I got broken when I saw it, because usually his white blood cells are around five, by 10 to the power 9 per liter, something like that. When they did and sent to me, it was 36. So like from 5,000 to 36,000, that is not normal. What's the next step? We need to raise funds for, for the treatment. And usually we would write to institutions in India because when you consider everywhere else, they, the treatment cost is much better. So we have a a hospital that has a track record already with treating other Ghanaian children. So we actually got cost assessment for that kind. So he needs to take chemotherapy in addition to some highly targeted treatment we call immunotherapy. In addition to that, he needs a bone marrow transplant for that. And the cost, when we did everything, including his transport with his caregiver to that place, they are accommodation there, they are feeding and everything. It has come to $66,000. Whoa. Yes, that is what we are up against to wow. save this young man's life. And so that is why in the past few days we have written letters, we have gone, we've set up a GoFundMe account, mm -hmm. basically abroad and also home to try and raise funds for this child. I mean, he's not the only a child we have on our treatment schedule, but he needs this. He needs this. And it's not every relapse that you can pursue, but this is one of those that if we get funds on time, he really has a very good chance. So that is why we are embarking on this campaign. Yes. Dr. Nihad Salifu, we really appreciate your time on this.